All right, folks, you pick the right side of the ballroom to come to. So, yeah, I'm just kidding. Not really, though. I'm going to introduce Stuart. Stuart's a good friend of mine. Stuart has been to multiple uh, presentations with us, done a great job. He's going to be talking about some really good stuff today, and we're, we're on board for the water. I'm telling you, there is much more to, to water quality than what we realize. Uh, the poultry guys are way ahead of us. I'm not sure the dairy guys may be ahead of us, but I'm telling you, water quality makes a difference. So, anyways, pay attention. We've got some really good stuff. Stuart, go ahead. Thank you, Thanks. Thank you all very much for, uh, for sitting in. I'm uh, going to stand behind the lectern today, and I'm normally a, a pacer, but I'm going to make it easy on the uh, film crews today and kind of go from here. So we're going to discuss a little bit about the impact of, of line cleaning and water treatment. Um, so when we start, we're just going to give the raw numbers. Okay, The water content in a newborn baby piglet is 82%. The water content in a 240 pound empty carcass hanging at the processing plant is about 51%. The water content of manure is 90.8%. And probably the most important fact in all of this is that pigs drink twice as much as they eat. So when we talk about oral inputs, water is the number one oral input for pork production. So before we get started with the whys and wherefores, we're just going to talk about a few of the givens, things that we know about water. Number one, as we mentioned, it's the largest oral input in pork production. Water is vital to all bodily functions. It carries nutrients, it regulates body temperature, all sorts of things. Um, scale buildup in water lines reduces water volume. For example, if I have a, a three-quarter inch water line and I just have a sixteenth of an inch of scale buildup inside that line, now I've got a half inch line. And I don't care how much water I try and push through that, a half inch line can only carry so much. Um, from our own experiences, we know that farm, farm water often smells bad and, and tastes bad. Um, water is often loaded with bacterial uh, contamination. We wouldn't drink it. Heck, we don't even like showering in the water out on the farms. Um, pigs drink because they have to, not because they want to. So here are the what ifs. So what if water lines were cleaned and descaled, allowing for more water volume and reduced contamination? What would happen if we can improve taste and odor? What would happen if we could reduce levels of bacterial contamination in the water? Well, the chances are the results would be increased water consumption, and we all know the benefits that come along with that. So for us, the wow moment was at the 2010 AASB meeting in Omaha, Nebraska. Uh, Marka was down. Um, there was a Dr. Jim Dick from the Fairmont Vet Clinic in southern Minnesota who was discussing surprising challenge, surprising opportunities in challenging times. And he was recounting this story of one of his clients who was spending about $2,400 a month on treatment and prevention. So they're going down their checklist of, of what could be going wrong, and they found that upon further examination, the water at this nursery site was found to be contaminated with bacteria, including E. coli, and had high iron content. The water line was also partially plugged. By correcting these problems through water cleaning and water disinfection, they were able to lower those treatment costs to $673 a month. So there it is in black and white, a two-thirds reduction in treatment costs. So we take that out into the field and we, and we develop a plan. And plan one is cleaning water lines. Now, I attend many pork congresses and world pork expos through the years, and I can talk to producer after producer who's walking up and down that aisle about water treatment, and I'll ask that question, when's the last time you cleaned those water lines? And I'm going to get one of two answers, either never, or I did it once, but it clogged all my drinkers, and I'll never do it again. Well. At a 12-year-old nursery in southern Minnesota, we cut open a three-quarter inch water line. We stuck our finger in there and pulled out a glob of black gooey stuff, 
that you wouldn't wish on your worst enemy. And this is where this drinking water is passing through before getting to our animals. So the real reason to clean water lines is, number one, as we mentioned, to increase water value of the pigs. It also helps improve efficacy of water medications. Right? If I'm water medicating for E. coli, and somewhere in all that black goop I got E. coli, which is probably a pretty good chance, then that is a very indiscriminate water medication. It'll kill that E. coli there, so by the time it gets to the pig, it's probably spent and, and not much left to it. And obviously, if we're cleaning water lines with the proper kind of product, we'll reduce pathogens in that line. So we actually developed a product called Pericide. And Pericide addresses the, the answers that we got to questions about clogging my drinker lines and I'm never doing this water cleaning thing again. So Pericide is what we would call a dual action line cleaner. Number one, and most importantly, as all the products in our water treatment program, this is an EPA registered disinfectant. We're not just using voodoo dust out here to get stuff done. These are all regulated products. It's a very, very unique blend of peroxide and parasitic acid. So peroxide, as an oxidizer, gives you that kind of bubbling action when it gets inside that water line and scours the inside of that line. And then we have this compound called parasitic acid. In layman's terms, parasitic acid would be described as citric acid times 10. Just a much more stout version. So what happens is as the, as the parasitic acid is dissolving this material that the peroxide has pulled off the walls, we're preventing drinkers from getting clogged. Uh, the side benefit of all of this is that because this is an EPA registered disinfectant, we're also killing pathogens in that line. These photos are actual photos from that same 12-year-old nursery that we cut open and, and got the black slimy biofilm from. And what you can see is that on the top left, uh, well, you really can't see it that well, but that's what a line looks like with all that black slime inside it. Um, once cleaned, a process which entails filling up these water lines and letting them sit overnight and flushing them in the morning, it then becomes clean, fully operational, and that, that discoloration you see is just the PVC that, it, that has absorbed the rust color. The more telling pictures are the bottom. Uh, again, these lines are filled overnight with a 3% solution. They're let to sit, they're flushed in the morning, and the first five gallons of liquid that come out of that clean line come out as a really slimy, stringy, thick, orange looking material. And trust me when I tell you that picture doesn't do it justice. It was some really, really horrible looking stuff. And then by the time we're done flushing that line, the last five gallons come out literally clear enough to see to the bottom of the pail. So it comes down to a really easy question, right? What do I want my pigs drinking? That or that? And that's simply from line cleaning alone. Step two in the process, once we get the lines clean, is to disinfect that drinking water. Now, for many years, people have been using chlorine, a chlorinated system to disinfect drinking water. Big problem being that animals can only legally ingest a certain level of chlorine, maybe a four to five part per million level, but the reality of it is that it takes about 200 parts per million of chlorine to do any serious killing. So the question becomes, what are we really doing by chlorinating drinking water? So the better option is a, is a compound called chlorine dioxide. We have a product called MaxChlor, and it is a stabilized chlorine dioxide liquid. Now, in reality, the material in that five-gallon pail, the blue pail that you see up there, is a chemical called sodium chlorite, which is a precursor to ClO2, chlorine dioxide. We activate that product and convert it to ClO2 by adding an acid activator to the compound. By adding that activator, the ClO2 is a gas that is slowly released and is then captured in the liquid solution. 
So you turn what's in that pail, sodium chloride, into a chemical called chlorine dioxide. And why would we do that? We would do that because chlorine dioxide is three times more powerful than bleach. It's much more stable in the process of contaminants, uh, iron, minerals, whatever else might be in the water, and it has a much longer duration of activity. So when, we, when Steve talks about uh, the poultry industry being a few years ahead in water treatment, this is the chemical that they're relying on. So we lay out all the basic facts, but then we got to make the rubber hit the road. All right, so we need some proof of concept. So we go right back to the source, Dr. Jim Dick and the folks at the Fairmont Vet Clinic, and tell them what we have in mind. We want to put these theories into practice. We want to show that treating drinking water really does have a positive effect on animal health and performance. So we do a project, and let me stop here and just give some credit to the folks involved with this project. It was a Dr. Andrea Pitkin and Dr. Steve Stone from the Fairmont Vet Clinic and a Mr. Jesse McCoy of MWI Animal Health, who is their water tech specialist. Uh, so we took one of their clients, we took isoweens from a per stable 2400 head sow farm. This was a 20 year old nursery, original water lines, no updating, no retrofitting. And we did four study groups with 198 pigs each. We wanted to do separate and simultaneous treatment side by side of, with escalating levels of treatment and we ran a six week turn through their nursery. So when we say side by side escalating treatments, basically what we mean is that group one, the first 198 pigs we tested that were in the trial had no treatment at all. They were our control group. Group two just had the lines cleaned with our parasite disinfectant. No other treatment besides that. Group three had line cleaning with parasite plus disinfectant, disinfection with the max floor. And group four had what we would consider the entire program, which was line cleaning with parasite disinfecting with max chlor and pH reduction or activation with our product called Dynamite, which is a propionic iodine-based compound. Now I'll tell you, I'll preface this by saying when the results of these studies came in, we sat down with the veterinary folks who ran the programs and we were all a little leery. This, this information was going to be presented at the AASV but the numbers were so astounding that we thought people would look at them as unrealistic to achieve. But the numbers are the numbers, and the vets felt very comfortable in presenting this information. What we found during this six-week turn that based on average daily gain, comparing the full program, line cleaning, disinfection, activation, we had a 21% increase in average daily gain during that six weeks. 21% increase in average daily gain. And just to back off a step, and I've listed this in, in the next two slides, is there are some folks who are not predisposed to jump into the whole program, right? They don't wanna go both feet in and, and get the whole thing done, so maybe they wanna just start with line cleaning. At the very least, let's get our water lines clean. And even in that instance, the pigs in the group that just had line cleans still exhibited a 6% increase in average daily gain from just line cleaning alone without any other treatment. Regarding feed efficiency during the six week turn, when we compared the full treatment group to the control group, we had a 13% improvement in feed efficiency, 13%. And in the group that just had their lines cleaned and no other treatment versus the control group, we still had an increase of 8%. So again, if we just want to start slowly and if we just want to get lines cleaned, it's more than a, it's more than a, a better picture that we're drawing ourselves. There are numbers associated to this, performance numbers that will pay back. Um, and a very telling number was the weekly weight gains by group. And what we saw after the six week turn in the full treatment versus the control group 
was a 5.5 pound per pig increase in closeout weight. Five and a half pounds per pig. We can all do the numbers. Turns out to be pretty astounding stuff. And again, even if we're just cleaning lines, if we're doing nothing but that, we're still seeing an increase of 1.2 pound per pig. So it gives us options. We don't. We didn't want to. We know how how programs are sometimes uh, received. We didn't want to make it an all or nothing. Either you have to do this, or nothing good's going to happen. And it's just not the truth. If we want to take one step at a time, and you want to, and you want to start line cleaning, the number benefits are there. And just as a quick summary and a quick little note after that. Um, 21% increases in average daily gain versus control groups, 13% improvements of feed efficiency, and five and a half pounds per pig in weight gain. Um, one of the more intriguing parts of this study that doesn't get as much publicity as the sheer numbers was that three and a half weeks into this trial, the farm broke with E. coli. And not coincidentally, the only pigs that did not break with E. coli were the pigs on the water treatment program. So when people ask about the effect of water treatment on enteric bacteria, I think that says it all. So why should we explore water treatment? All right? We know why we need to treat water. We know the condition of it before the pigs get it. We have research and proven performance. Like I said, this product has been going on for years in the poultry industry. They don't live without it. They do it after every flock of birds. Uh, we have physical implementation and installation. We actually have teams that install this equipment. So we're not just going to give you this instruction book and say, go do your plumbing and get everything done. We know you guys are busy. So we have teams that do this. And like biosecurity, water treatment doesn't cost, it pays. It's the ultimate return on investment, and this is the best reason. Healthy pigs are happy pigs. So I heard the applause, I see people coming in, we're done. Thank you so much for your time, I appreciate that. Hey, while we get set up for the next talk, uh, do we have, we have time for one question? Go ahead. Right, great question. Um, this is what we would consider a closeout program. So when you're closing out a group of pigs, while you're doing your cleaning and disinfecting and stripping down that room, it is so simple just to mix a stock solution of the parasite, get those lines clean. The water disinfection is a 24-7 deal. It's all the time, the costs are pennies. One gallon of the chlorine dioxide to achieve the part per million level we're looking at makes anywhere from 15 to 30,000 gallons of drinking water. So, depending on whether you've experienced, you know, you're having health issues or not, it's either a one to a two part per million level. So, and we have monitors to, to track that as well to make sure you're using the right amount of material. Thanks again, I appreciate it.